Okay. Anybody is in? Yes, sir. Okay. Fine. Okay. So intermediate filaments they join by lateral twisting. Okay. Now see what we have seen is that the uh, actin filaments or uh, this uh, tubulins how they join they join end to end that means see in case of actin filaments or the tubulin i mean to say the microtubules there what happens the subunits they just bind end to end they'll bind end to end okay one one will bind one then the second will come third will come like this so they bind into it but in, in this case the subunits they are not globular they are fibrous they are like a fibers so how they bind so they will bind in twisting that means just like dna the two strands of the dna they bind around each other similarly here the two uh, strands or i mean two uh, fibers of the intermediate filaments uh, the subunits they will just bind by twisting among themselves. So I'm going to show you here. Uh, where is it? Yeah. Okay. You can see now? Yes, sir. Okay, so now you see this is a structure of a subunit of intermediate filament. Okay, so what you see is that this is a alpha helix. This is a alpha helix. Okay, so then and you know that uh, every protein they have got two uh, ends one is called this one is called mm. n terminal end okay mm. and this is carboxy terminal or it is called c terminal end okay mm. so this is one subnet now how the second subnet will bind see here the second subnet will not join here in the end as a C or N, it is not like that. The second subunit, it will form a twist. Okay, they will wind around themselves. So it is called coiled coil diaper. Because why it is called coiled coil? Because the subunit itself is coiled. What is alpha helix? Alpha helix is a kind of coil. So this particular subunit, it is already in the coil form. Okay. So now the second subunit it forms a coil around each other. So that's why it is called coiled coil. That means the subunits themselves are coiled. And again, two coils, they are again coiling against each other. So we call it coiled coil timer. Okay. And then these two subunits they bind with the same polarity. That means if you see both the subunits, their end terminal end is towards the same side. C terminal and N terminal in the same side. So that means we call it parallel. Okay. Why they are parallel? Because their ends are similar. Both the subunits, their C terminal ends are in the same direction, and the N terminal end are in the same direction. Okay. Now, hmm. kind of dimer. Okay. One more coil coil dimer. It comes to make a tetramer. So now this one is the second coil coil diaper. This is the first one. They will go and bind. Now they bind in the staggered manner. Staggered means what you find is that first thing is that this tet tetramer, okay, you find that in, in this in case of this particular dimer, the end terminal is towards this side, C terminal is towards this side. But in the, in case of this particular dimer, what you find is that C terminal is towards this side, okay, and N terminal is towards this side. So that's mean that means these two dimers are anti-parallel, okay, because their C terminal ends 
are in the different or in the opposite direction number one number two it is called what it is said here staggered tetramer staggered means this c terminal a it is if it is present over here we call it tetramer but you see the c terminal a is present over here at this position not here not here it is present here that is why it is called staggered staggered tetramer of two called coil timers okay fine so first stage is this is the first stage second stage not sorry this is the first stage where two subunits they bind by coiling around each other we call it coiled coil timer then similarly coil two numbers of coiled coil timer they bind okay but in the staggered manner okay fine so and then staggered and anti parallel manner so mm -hmm. here are two things are there one is staggered manner one is the anti parallel manner okay then so these are the two okay then thereafter the next step is that two tetramers pack together now this is one so this is as a whole this is one tetramer similarly another tetramer comes over here it binds in the same way fine so that means these tetramers okay so they will bind in this manner so why it is staggered it is staggered so that the tetramers can come and bind if they if the second timer also binds at this position this and this position what will happen they won't be staggered but the thing is that the second tet tetramer will not be able to bind so second tetramer what will happen one part of the second tetramer will bind at this position okay and from this side another tetramer will bind at this position okay so here it is showing that this uh, two tetramers they have uh, packed together okay then similarly this kind of this uh, if two tetramers they have bound means now it is a kind of octamer then eight tetramers okay they form a rope like filament okay then this makes a come one micro filament i mean sorry it makes a one intermediate filament so generally the intermediate filament they used to have the diameter of 10 nanometer okay fine so this so this kind of uh, oh, oh. So as a whole, what we have discussed today regarding the how uh, the uh, first thing is that uh, uh, how the uh, subunits they combine to form a polymer, okay? And then we have discussed that uh, what is the biochemistry behind the attachment of the polymers. So biochemistry is that the once the subunit is having atp or gtp in the active form the active form can go and get added to the growing polymer okay then what happens in this polymer okay you have the t form of the uh, subunits so this t form convert to d form so they convert to the d form because these uh, subunits they have got NTPase activity. NTPase means the activity which can break NTP. Actin binds ATP. So actin is having the ATPase like activity. Tubulin binds GTP. So tubulin has got GTPase activity. So it can break the GTP into GDP. Okay, fine. Now, in case of actin filaments, what you have seen is that one phenomenon occurs that is called treadmilling. In treadmilling, what happens? You have two ends, plus end and minus end. Okay. Plus end, the addition and separation is faster. 
minus 8 it is slower okay the thing is that treadmilling what happens from one side you are adding another side you are removing but thing is that one side you have minus one side you have plus so if you are removing from the plus end you are adding in the minus end as a whole the polymer will shrink why it will shrink because the rate of removal in the plus end is faster than rate of addition in the minus end so to make both addition uh, removal and the addition equal this can be done by adjusting the critical concentration okay so here in the minus end the concentration of the subunit it is less than the critical concentration but it is not that much less so that is why removal becomes slow here what happens the concentration of the free subunit it is very very high than the critical concentration very high means now the rate of addition will be faster here it is less but not very much less it is not very much less that is why removal is slow so as a whole what happens removal and addition they become the rate of removal equals rate of addition so as a whole the polymer length remains the same okay so this you find in case of actin filament question comes that uh, what is the need of the thread milling why thread milling is done because thread milling appears to be a wastage of energy one side you are removing, one side you are adding, okay, and you are adding the T form. T form means it will require GTP or ATP. So to produce ATP or GTP, you require energy, right? You will have to uh, do some glycolysis or one, whatever it is to produce the ATP. So it appears to be wastage of energy. So why the system is wasting energy? This can be in this way. Supposing that you have a motorbike or scooty and you have kept it you require scooty for say uh, every every day no problem but because of lockdown you have not used your scooty for one month then after when the lockdown opens you want to use your scooty find that your scooty stops working because you have not used your scooty for a long time your scooty will not work okay same thing happens to our system also. You have now you want the filament to remain constant. So you have either you have added or you have removed. So the length is constant. Okay. Is that now you want to reduce the length? So system will find it difficult to reduce the length, or you want to increase the length. It will be difficult to increase the length. Why? Because the filament was inactive for a long period of time. Just like your scooty, if you don't use it for a long period of time, it will stop working. Same thing happens here. So that is why the system keeps the filament active. System wants it to be in a constant length, but still it is active by you know addition and removal. So the system becomes active, it is dynamic okay it is not dead fine now in case of dynamic instability then you find in case of micro tubules micro tubules what happens they constantly increase and decrease their length when they increase the length we call it growth when they decrease the length we call it uh, shrinkage and we use one term if you read in that book You'll find rescue and catastrophe. Catastrophe means once the length decreases. Rescue means when it increases. Okay. So now, if you want to increase the length, what you will do? To increase the length, you will have to increase the rate of addition of the subunit. Now, what subunit you are adding? T subunit. Okay. And the D form it starts getting removed okay so what you will do you will prevent hydrolysis of the t form to d form if you prevent the breakdown of atp or gtp so what will happen the removal will be slow okay but it is not that in the dynamic stability when there is a growth 
there is no removal at all no still there is removal still there is hydrolysis but the rate of hydrolysis is less very very less in that case b form is less so there is a less removal this is what you find in case of uh, growth now the system wants shrinkage so shrinkage what will happen this will the system will number one will stop adding the subunits number two it will accelerate hydrolysis of dtp over there <coughs> excuse me so it will accelerate the hydrolysis of the gtp as a result what will happen the t form will convert to the d form and they will start getting removed t polymerase that is called shrinkage so these two things you see in case of dynamic instability now we come to intermediate filaments so intermediate filaments they are made up of intermediate subunits so these subunits they are not joined end to end they join in the lateral twisting and this intermediate filaments they are i mean this subunits they are made up of only alpha helix there is no beta sheet so this is alpha helix okay so this two intermediate i mean the two subunits they form a coil which we call coiled coil coiled coil means because subunit itself is coiled is alpha helix then two alpha helix they will coil around themselves so we call it coiled coil diamond so two subunits that join so their polarity is same n terminal n terminal c terminal c terminal like this thereafter the next comes this is the timer and then the next timer comes so this next timer it will form a staggered it will not bind like this it will bind in this manner okay so my nails can be understood as c terminal so the c of they are present in the now these two dimers they will bind in the staggered manner if it is like this it is not staggered they are staggered okay and they are anti parallel fine now same way the next tetramer will bind at this position this position one will bind at this position okay so then this kind of eight numbers of tetramers will bind laterally and then they will form a filament now here one question comes that what kind of bonding it is see in case of actin filaments in case of microtubule filaments this bond between two subunit these are non covalent bonds it may be polar interaction it may be hydrophobic interaction but in this case okay the two subunits which bind laterally okay what type of binding it is two types of binding occurs here one is called hydrophobic interaction so what is hydrophobic interaction hydrophobic interaction occurs between two hydrophobic molecules as you see hydrophobic molecule means this alpha helix it is hydrophobic why the, uh, why it is hydrophobic because the amino acids present in the alpha helix cannot form the hydrogen bond with the water that is why alpha helix is hydrophobic so two hydrophobic two alpha helix they will join two hydrophobic interaction okay then the second type of bonding that occurs here it is the disulfide bond so disulfide bond means in one alpha helix you have a cysteine in another alpha helix you also have a cysteine these two cysteine they have got exposed sulfur so these two sulfur they will bind they will bind they will form a disulfide bond so that is a so disulfide bond is a covalent bond that is why intermediate filaments are very very strong it is many times thousand times stronger than microtubules or uh, this uh, actin filaments okay because actin filaments and microtubules the bonding is non covalent but here the bonding it also includes the disulfide bond 
So disulfide bond is a covalent bond. So all these covalent bonds are the strongest bonds. So that is why once it forms the, you know, once the two subunits, they bind to covalent bond, it is difficult to remove. You cannot remove it. Okay. So the examples of the most important example of intermediate filament is the keratin. So keratin is basically it is a kind of intermediate filament. Muscles, muscle fibers, or these are all intermediate filaments. <coughs> then, in case of neurons, nerve cells, in the axons, you have a kind of filament that is called neurofilament. So these neurofilaments they are uh, also made up of intermediate filaments. So what is the need of intermediate filaments over there? Because the axons are very long. They are very long. So now they have to give protection to the axon. This protection against the mechanical stress. So it is given by the intermediate filament. Okay. So do you have any question? So it is diamond in acting uh, filaments. Pardon? The dynamic instability. Yeah. It is said that uh, it occurs in microtubules, but it will not occur in actin filaments also. Yeah. Uh, in actin filaments, it occurs, but rarely. Why rarely? Because microtubules, they are, they are, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, their function is like that. They will have to constantly, you know, shrink and grow. But actin filaments generally, once you know their, their length is a little bit constant. They don't have, they don't need, require to increase or decrease their length. Okay, but in case of microtubules, okay, they'll have to constantly increase and decrease their length, and that is why the dynamic instability you find in the microtubules mainly. And you will not find this in the intermediate filament. The reason is that because of intermediate filaments, the disassembly is very difficult. Okay. Do you have any more questions? No, sir. Okay. So, okay. what you can do is that uh, for uh, next uh, class, we'll meet on Monday. Okay. And uh, okay, sir. so, now onwards, for L2, once I'll uh, uh, this, uh, set the class, so you will get, get one email. Okay. So in your email, just yes, click yes. Okay, that's your do. Just click the yes okay. button. So this will be added to your calendar. So this will, you know, synchronize my time with your time. Okay, because you know, okay, your watch may be gaining, my watch may be losing. So all these things is will be taken care by this way. Okay, fine. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. So okay. See you on Monday. Okay. okay. Have a good day and stay safe. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you.